Hey, what's up guys, Autofanatic. So today's video, we're gonna be flushing and bleeding the brakes on the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Now, if you saw that quick little snippet on the intro, that was when I did my Stelvio. After seeing all the contamination that came out of those calipers, I was like, hey, you know what? I gotta do the Giulia Quadrifoglio and I gotta show you guys a quick video. So I'm gonna get the camera set up. I'm gonna show you everything we're gonna use today. I'm gonna walk you through it. It's a simple DIY. And if you guys have never done this before, then watch the video. If you feel confident, go ahead and do it. If you don't feel confident, then don't attempt to do it because it's safety, of course, related. And like I said, I'm not an Alfa Romeo technician, but I pretty much know how to do all this stuff. And I'm gonna show you quick and simple how easy it is. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna show you guys what we're working with today. So for the Alfa Romeo, you're gonna need 11 millimeter flare wrench, and I have an 11 millimeter on a quarter inch drive just to break them loose. These are paint touch-up dabs. I'm gonna show you this in the video. We got a clean towel. We have our ATE type 200 brake fluid. And this is the adapter. This is the European adapter that I use for Ferrari and Alfa Romeos and a bunch of other cars. You can see this is why I recommend picking this up is because you could unscrew it without having this hose kink up while you're using it. We have here, this is a Motive brake bleed bottle. So we're gonna pretty much be taking the fluid out of here and we're gonna recycle it. Then we're gonna charge the uh, Motive for every single caliper that we do. Now, this is what I wanna show you guys. This is what's important. This is a standard Motive power bleeder. This gauge only goes up to 30 PSI. Now, when I do a lot of the newer cars, I modified it. I changed the gauge. This is a quarter inch NPT threaded gauge. This gauge goes up to 160. This container definitely can handle over 100 PSI. Just, it's so strong. And then over here, I just drilled a hole and I popped a Schrader valve in it. So that's gonna be the little tip on how you could take a Motive power bleeder and do a lot of the bleeding and flushing on any of the modern new cars, unless you don't have the diagnostic tool to open and close a spool valve in the ABS system. So we're gonna be pumping up the system per caliper at 40 PSI. That seems to be working well. And we're just gonna go every single wheel. We're gonna go, we're gonna check the pressure. We're gonna charge it with the air compressor and we're gonna start the video right now. You're gonna to wanna to wear gloves when you're working with any kind of brake fluid, just because it is corrosive. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure your motive power bleeder is perfectly cleaned out. I clean it out every time I use it with some denatured alcohol. So we're gonna put most likely two containers in here. I have, I have like a case of 24 of these, so I don't have any issues of uh, running out of fluid while I do this. Another thing too, my motive power bleeder has a quick disconnect. This just makes it so much easier. And I'm gonna show you guys when we connect it to the car, you just connect it like that and you disconnect it. You can leave this on the car, you can clean this up and then take that off last and top off your fluid. So we're gonna get started right now by connecting it to the master cylinder. All right guys, we're over at the intelligent braking system, master cylinder. This is where the fluid goes. We're gonna take the cap off. We're gonna put that usually over there and that's it. See how easy it is to just screw it on. We're gonna do a pressure test and then we're gonna go through the bleed process right now. All right guys, before we get started, another little tip I wanna show you, use a little WD-40 to spray around every bleeder screw before you get started because this is an aluminum caliper. These are steel fittings. The car's been driven for four years, corrosion, anything like that, it could seize up. It's just a little bit of a preventative tip just to spray this with a little WD-40. Very simple, don't go crazy, just like that. All right, guys, we're all set up. So we got the motive filled. It's all connected to the quick disconnect. I have a little bit of a hook uh, off the retainer just to keep the hose elevated so we don't get any air bubbles. So we're just gonna charge it up now to 40 PSI. Boom. You can see as soon as I charge it up, the fluid went from the reservoir straight into the tube. So what's gonna happen is as we let out pressure from each caliper, it's gonna fill the master cylinder to eliminate air or running it dry causing more of an issue where you got to take it off the car and bench bleed it which i don't even know how to do in this car so my theory the way i always bleed brakes we're going to start with the rear passenger the driver's side rear the passenger front and then we're going to finish it with the driver's side front that's just the way i do it it's a sequence of going there 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 and there so it's just like a crisscross pattern uh, based on the length and distance from the actual master cylinder so we're going to go over to the passenger rear wheel and get started right now all right, guys, so we're over at the first rear caliper. This is the passenger side rear, so we're gonna use the 11 millimeter. Just pop over your boots over here. These are your little protective boots. And like I said, we already sprayed them with WD-40 a little while ago. And we just wanna make sure that it'll come loose with the 11 millimeter flare wrench. And we're gonna put it over here. So you can see it there in the camera. Let me see if I get closer. You see the fluid? that's coming out and we're gonna fill this bottle up. So the way I'm gonna do this, being that I'm not just bleeding it, I wanna flush all the original fluid out of the car. I'm gonna fill this bottle up about halfway with each caliper. So we have an inboard bleeder screw and an outboard bleeder screw. Another little tip 
that I'll share with you guys. Uh, I've just got into this habit always installing big brake kits that are brand new out of the box. They have crossover lines, so the, line, the fluid is going to cross over. On this particular caliper, it's got a crossover tube on the bottom. So I just take a soft rubber mallet and I'll just tap the caliper. This will just help if there's any trapped air pockets in the caliper itself, it's as far as the billet housing or the crossover tube. You can see there, we're just filling it up, nothing too exciting. So when I'm done with this, we're gonna tighten it up and I'm gonna show you the next step uh, as we move along. All right guys, so I just did the inboard and I finished that up. So I went and I recharged the motor power bleeder up to 40, it dropped down to 28. So we're just gonna crack this bleeder open. Okay, a lot of air bubbles and a lot of contamination. Right there, I could see it in the line. So you can see here, see what's going on? So we're pressurizing it from the front, the whole hydraulic system. So we have fluid in the calipers and in the small brake lines. We're not gonna be pulling out gallons of fluid. So we wanna push everything through, all the lines in the car, the crossover lines, the calipers, everything to get all the contamination, all the old fluid out so we have fresh fluid in there. So we're still gonna give it a little bit of a tap. Okay, so we're actually like almost 75% filled on this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close the bleeder valve right now. All right, we're gonna close it up. I am going to transfer this into one of the empty containers. We're gonna start over and we're gonna finish this and I'm gonna show you the final steps as far as when you're done bleeding, we're gonna clean everything up, including inside the bleed valve. But I wanna make sure every little piece of old brake fluid through the volume and displacement is just flushed completely out of the calipers the master cylinder and all of the brake lines. So we're looking pretty good here. So we're gonna tighten that up. And what I usually do, clean out the draw tube. This is why I use these. Now inside here, you're gonna get brake fluid. So I'm gonna zoom in on the camera just so you guys can see it, watch. Okay, do you see all the fluid that just came out by sticking that in there? This just makes sense. It's a perfect size, it's tapered, and you're gonna guarantee that you're gonna get any of that brake fluid that's kind of stuck in there out. Because sometimes you could be losing these rubber boots and you go wash the car and if this drips onto the wheel barrel or the caliper and it sits there and it's not cleaned, it's going to destroy and remove the paint. So that's just a little tip I wanted to show you is just use the paint touch up easy dabbers. All right, so we got that clean. Now we're just gonna take some of our soap and water and solution and clean up all around it. Now we're pretty much gonna move on to the next caliper. All right guys, we're at the home stretch. This is the last caliper, this is the driver's side front. So we're gonna charge it up the motor power bleeder to 40 pounds. Boom. So FYI, I didn't show it in the video, but the front caliper on the passenger side gave me a little bit of an issue. One of the bleeder valves was completely seized up and all corroded there was a ton of rust that came out of the outboard bleeder valve. Um, so I have to order some new ones and I will probably get that done next week. And I'm probably gonna replace all the bleeders on all calipers, being that I saw that, even though only one of them was jammed up so far. All right, this one's good, this one's flowing, you can see it there. It's a lot of little corrosion that I see as I crack open the bleeder. And that's what we wanna get out of the system. We wanna get any water or contamination, corrosion. So the brake fluid itself is very corrosive. So inside the brake lines, there's most likely some um, coating. And I, you know, four years old, uh, things are starting to get broken down. And that's why it's definitely smart to do this now. And I can't believe I waited so long, but at least it's getting done and I'm doing a video for you guys. So if you guys wanna do it yourselves on your cars, you could uh, knock it out pretty easily in about an hour. It takes about an hour. It's actually more time to set the car up and do filming and also time the filming sessions with all the ambient noise and what's going on you know, between my neighbors and everything else. So other than that, the sun went down. I'm just gonna pull this back. Okay, so I do it a few times. So far we took two liters of fluid through the system as far as what we flushed. And that's kind of what I want. So it's gonna be probably about two and a half to three just because, like I said, I don't want to be stingy. I want to get all the corrosion and all the old fluid out of this car. 
So you're gonna get better pedal feel on a conventional car. As far as this, I don't really know because this is an intelligent braking system, uh, brake by wire. But the brakes should feel a hell of a lot better by getting all that displaced corrosion out of the lines. So when you do it, you want to have some. You want to have the tube inserted in some fresh fluid. You don't want to have it like this bottle completely empty. FYI, it just seems to work a lot of better uh, doing it that way. That I found. Okay. So we're gonna. This container is almost full, so we're gonna go empty this out, and we're gonna come right back. And I only emptied about half of it out, so we're gonna crack it open one more time. I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to this stuff, but. I'm not really concerned about wasting brake fluid. I just want to get the best possible bleed uh, as I can. Whenever I do a brake system, whether it's a new brake kit or a flush, I'll do it two, three, four times just to make it perfect, uh, even for a clutch system. And the extra time goes a long way when you want to do it you know, perfectly and you don't have any issues down the road with noises and uh, pistons getting stuck. Okay, so we're good there. We're gonna put this to the side. We're gonna get the easy dabber. Take the easy dabber, get all that fluid that's stuck inside the bleeder out. Purge it out, just like that. Clean solution. Parts cleaning brush. Clean microfiber towel. Dry everything up and move over to the next bleeder. All right, so we're still at about 40 PSI, and this is it. This is the final bleeder to crack open and flush out. Yeah, look at all, wow, there's a ton of corrosion and dirt that's in there. So I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. We'll keep it like right there. See if you guys could capture anything if you played a video back and you kind of zoom in if you're watching it on a big monitor. But yeah, that's uh, so far everything went smoothly except the outboard bleeder on the front passenger side. This was seized. There was no fluid coming out. So I had to clean it all out, um, pull the bleeder out completely, let it bleed out from around the neck, and then put it back in and then bleed it out. So we're getting a good bleed right here. Close it up. Wow, look at that. Can you guys see this? All this particular matter is right here. So like I, like I showed you in the intro to the video, when I did my Stelvio, it, this really concerns me that all it is debris could be inside the brake caliper and the brake lines. So that's why I'm doing this. I don't know, let me see if you guys could see this. Let me get the camera closer. See it right there, guys? Look at all that junk that's inside the line that came out. So that's just a little bit of a close-up view so you guys could get a better idea of why this is imperative to do. And for guys that are going to the track, you're probably going to want to do this very frequently or before every track session because you're going to overheat the fluid most likely, especially with this car. Look at that, every time I crack it open, there's more debris coming out. So I'm gonna continue doing this uh, for a couple of minutes to make sure that is crystal clear. I don't wanna have any debris coming out of that line when I crack it open, so I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, so we're finally finished. This took 12 times to get this bleeder to spit out clean fluid. So I'm just gonna clean up, and then we're gonna disconnect the motive power bleeder. I'll show you that, and we'll conclude the rest of this video. All right, guys, we're all done, so we're gonna release the air out of the motive slowly. You're gonna see the fluid is gonna to start to come back into the reservoir. That's what you want. You wanna give it a couple of minutes to do that. And the quick disconnect's great, so you could disconnect it. If there's anything in the line, we're just gonna pull it off. And uh, if we have to top off the master cylinder, I'm gonna do that with a syringe. So that's it, we're pretty much good to go. Okay, got that there, so here we go. Okay, look, no mess, no drips. We take the bleeder, put it to the side. All right, guys, so got the motive disconnected. You can see it's a little bit overfilled, so I'm just gonna take a syringe and suck some of that fluid out. 
to about right there. Okay, put that to the bench, put the reservoir cap on. Now we're gonna clean up all our tools and uh, put the wheels back on the car and get it down on the ground and we're pretty much finished. All right guys, we're all finished with the full flush and bleed on the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio. Very, very easy process. A couple of tips I just wanted to uh, let you guys know if you're gonna do this yourself. If you notice any corrosion on your bleeder screws, I would suggest you order new ones ahead of time, just in case. I ran into an issue on the passenger side front where it was seized up, a lot of rust and corrosion. You saw in the video all the junk that came out of the braking system inside the calipers, inside the brake line. So it definitely is better to remove the fluid after a couple of years, start fresh. We've got all new fluid in the car. Also, recommend getting a power bleeder. Uh, these things are inexpensive and cheap. Make sure if you're going to do anything on a newer car and you don't have the diagnostic tool to open and close the ABS system, just change your gauge. Install a Schrader valve, very, very easy to use. Get the billet adapter, also get the quick disconnects like I showed you, these things are great, it makes it a lot easier. 11 millimeter line wrench, a little bit of a syringe to suck out the fluid at the end. Reservoir to catch all your fluid. Uh, rubber mallet, if you guys wanna do it, you don't have to do it, but I just do it out of habit. And also the touch up paint easy dabbers, like I showed you, to clean out all the fluid that sits inside the brake bleeders. So that's it, hope you guys got some tips and tricks. If you have any questions, you could comment below or contact me direct. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.